This show is part of the RetroZap.com podcast network. Now, prepare yourselves for a Starship Sabres and Scoundrels special edition. This is so wizard. You feeling me, Hunter's Wizard? Oh, I'll just step into you, girl, with my intellectual wizard politics. I have an enchanter. Wizards only, fools. Wizards rule. There are some who call me... Tim? Greetings, Tim the Enchanter. Nope, wizards only. Wizards only, fools. Warmest of wishes, scoundrels, on this very special edition of That's a Wizard. On this very special edition of Starship Sabers and Scoundrels. On this edition, we have compiled just a few of our favorite things. And while sugar plums might be dancing in children's heads, in our heads, things of Star Wars are dancing. And I'm joined this evening by my two wonderful co-hosts and very good friends, Dennis Keithley and Darth Texas. And I'm Jay Krebs. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm doing wonderful. It's good to talk to you guys. It's been a while. We've all been kind of uh, un hiatus while we got over the flu and various holiday businesses uh and things so it's uh it's good to get everyone back on the mics and record something again yeah yeah uh, it is absolutely uh, i've been really busy too i mean it's just still non-stop even through all the holiday season you know so uh mm-hmm. i'm almost done shopping maybe oh good for you yeah. tis the season right tis yeah. the season for a lot of things <laughs> oh yeah yeah it sure is like colds and so uh, <laughs> yeah yeah so on this special edition, Scoundrels, um, we've compiled just some of the things on our to-do list, to-get list, and so we just wanted to share those with you. So they range from everything you can wear, to use, to you name it. So it's just all the wonderful Star Wars things that we could finally come up with. And if you've listened to some of the previous editions of That's a Wizard, you know that it's usually a monthly rundown of all of the fashion and Star Wars goodies from across the galaxy. And so um, let's just jump into it. What do you guys think? Let's do it. Yeah. So let's see what's first in in, uh, Santa Sith's bag here hmm Hmm. figured you'd like that one (laughs) (laughs) well first on my list is um being a teacher of course i'm always on the lookout for some great office supplies so hallmark has an ad at tape dispenser or atat if you prefer and um this one is really cool it's 44.95 plus a free ship to store uh, or you can pay 6.99 shipping and handling through their website and it's a resin tape dispenser. And basically, it looks like an ad out has face planted into the grounds of Hoth. Yeah, that's cool. And emerging, <laughs> emerging from its back is the, the actual tape itself. So it actually includes one roll of tape. So that's pretty cool. And then it's uh, about three and a half inches wide Whoa. and a little over four inches high. Whoa. And it's about eight and three eighths inches in diameter so um so i'd love to have this one on my my desk at school or even here at home yeah i like how it looks like it's uh been you know it's the one that wedge took out yeah yeah Yeah. exactly and it's for sure one of those great little conversation pieces too for the office Mm -hmm. so so that's my first pick okay um i'm up so mine is uh you know i really went heavy with think geek uh stuff but uh so i'm gonna start out with that one and i'm gonna say uh nothing says lounging or opulent like the star wars darth vader jersey robe oh yeah imagine lounging around in this thing with barely anything else on those hot (laughs) summer nights no, it kind of looks like a boxing robe, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, but on mm-hmm. the back, it's got um, Vader and the Imperial logo. And um, and they make several other ones, too, like one with Jyn Erso and one with Rebel Alliance and all that stuff in different colors, of course. This one's black and red with a red little belt thing. But, uh, yeah, it just kind of takes me back to my kimono days. Yeah. There you go. I did wear and a you kimono. So that was on Think Geek, right? Yeah, Think Geek. It's uh, about $20.99. Yeah. Hurry, hurry. Yeah, 
they have some really great stuff. I could I could see you opening presents on on Christmas morning in this evil overlord robe. Oh yeah. Or I can also see him headed down the aisle to the ring uh, to put the smack down <laughs> uh, in a CPA type fashion. Oh yes, but, yes, uh, that too. that's right. Are you ready to? Uh, uh, to uh, I don't know a accounting word that rhymes with rumble. <laughs> well, that's a good one. Uh, for my first pick, I've had my eye on this all month since they announced it. But uh, back in the beginning of December, uh, end of November, beginning of December. Uh, StarWars.com, Lucasfilm, in association with Columbia, announced that they were bringing back the Star Wars Empire Strikes Back crew parka that was used during the filming of The Empire Strikes Back. Now, this is kind of a high-end collectible at about $500, uh, but they took that classic design that a lot of people were drooling over uh, from production stills uh, from the making of The Empire Strikes Back when they were in Norway shooting the Battle of Hoth, and they've upgraded it with modern technology. Uh, this thing has got you know new thermal layers. It's got new seals, uh, updated patches. Um, it's it's quite drool worthy. And for those oh, of yeah. you that are animal friendly, it the fur on the collar has been replaced with a faux fur. Uh, From but humans. you know they describe. Uh, yeah, that's not what I had in mind. No. But they describe it as being waterproof, breathable, and features a seam-sealed outer layer along with the company's patented inner omni-heat thermoreflective lining and insulation. Wow. It features a removable, adjustable hood with removable faux fur trim, a two-way collar, ribbed comfort cups, wrist zips, and multifunctional pockets. Wow. And then the patches are something to behold as well. Um, the, one of the patches includes the coordinates where... <laughs> A shot in Norway, and I'd love to give a shot at trying to pronounce this, but it's <laughs> Hardinger Jokulin <laughs> Glacier. <laughs> you said it right. That was actually yeah. pretty pretty good. Yeah, it sounded like a right. native. That's right. <laughs> I, I practiced a couple times. Um, like I said, it's it's high end. It's at about five hundred dollars. It's completely impractical here for me here in Texas. Uh, it never gets quite cold enough to warrant having this thing. But again, it's it's pretty cool. Now, it went on sale December seventh. It sold out pretty much everywhere shortly thereafter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you want one of these, you're going to need to look for some third-party sellers. And there is a bit of a markup now. So, um, you know, do do be cautious. Uh, shop around. And uh, if you're going after this and see what kind of a deal you can get. Yeah, and that, that's really, really great advice, too, as far as shopping around. And this really, you were absolutely right when you said it was drool-worthy. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. And Columbia is definitely known for their quality and their dependability. Um, I could definitely use this in Ohio. It, it gets very cold here. I, mean, I know times where I just look at my console on my car and it's been minus 20 actual degrees Ouch. on my way to school wow. in the morning. So, yeah. So this, I would love to have one of these, quite honestly. And I'm definitely, you know, a little envious of all those who are able to snag one. So, definitely. yeah, this is a great pick. Yeah. Great pick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Good for keeping warm. Here's another one to keep warm. Well, maybe not yourself, but your food. Um, So, you know, we all go to those holiday parties and you got to have those little carry-ins and whatnot. And I actually do own this one. It's the Star Wars 7-Quart Slow Cooker from Box Lunch. Um, As a matter of fact, my husband just took some uh, meatballs to his bowling night carry-in the other night. It was It's funny because I asked him, I said, well, do you want to take the normal crock pot slow cooker or do you want to take my Star Wars one? And he said, I want to take your Star Wars one. Oh, very cool. (laughs) So it was funny because, and again, it's one of those things that's kind of a a nice little conversation piece. And, um, but it is adorable. It has the removable stoneware insert and it is a good size. Like I said, but it's seven quart. Um, It has low, high and warm settings to it cool touch handles stainless steel around the edges and then it's got these cutesy little um kind of cartoony style characters all the way around so you've got everybody from boba fett to c-3po chewy luke skywalker jawas princess leia you, you know all the all the classics kind of on a, a field of of stars so it looks like they're right there in the in the galaxy um this one it, it does have a little bit of a short cord on it i would like to have have it you know, have a little bit of a longer cord. And my other slow cooker that I have has this kind of rubbery thingy that stretches across the handles and across the lid to kind of keep the lid on, you mm-hmm. know, when you're going places. Um, this one didn't come with that. So I've been stealing the other one 
from my other slow cooker. So uh-huh. those are the only two things that, and it fits because I mean, they're both the same size. So, you know, the short cord, and the, the little stretchy thing that it doesn't have are my only two uh, things I don't like about it. But other than that, it's, it's awesome and I love it. So are the Star Wars characters that are on the side of this cooker, is that a design that has been used elsewhere or is that style? Because they seem familiar for some reason. They do. They they almost look like the what do they call that? The Chibli style. Oh, okay. Is that what is that what it's called? It's not quite anime. It's not quite cartoon. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Chibi. Yeah, not Chibli. Chibi. It's like Chibi, I think, or something Chibi. like or Chimmy. Something Chimmy. like that. Chunga. Chimmy Chunga style. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I know. Yeah, but they're brought to you by car- Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they're exactly. like they're cartoon. Yeah, there's a little Deadpool. Yeah, they're they're, they're cartoon. Where's, they're where's fun. Deadpool? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They are, but yeah. So I, I do highly recommend this one. Um, I also took it to a little carry in at school too, and it was it was the talk of the party. Well, there you go. All right. Uh, well, okay. So up next, um, I'm going to continue with my um, Think Geek, um, just blatant. Um, what do you call it? You know, telemarketing, not telemarketing. You know, promotion. Where are those shows? What's the station? You know where they sell stuff all the time? QVC? HSN? Yeah, 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 those things. Yeah, yeah. Infomercials. Home, there we home go. shopping. Yeah, home there shopping. Okay, there we go. Thank you. All right, so that was brought to you by me. Um, but uh, there is a Star Wars 40th anniversary, You're My Only Hope, 1,000-piece puzzle. And uh, this is kind of cool. I like puzzles. I-, I liked puzzles when I was a kid and everything. And this is uh, for nine ninety nine. It's very cool. Um, basically, the perspective is... Um, R2's face and it's um, his big, you know, main central eye and Princess Leia is leaning in, putting, I guess whatever, pushing the record button or you know what I mean, where she sends her message mm-hmm. to Obi-Wan. It's really good. It looks really cool. Probably really hard, but this kind of takes him back to those first gen puzzles that they had back in, um, you know, the 70s. And I still have the one of a Tuscan Raider, you know, but it's the same kind of styling around it too, with the Starfield and the old classic Star Wars logo with um, the real buff Luke and you know Leia and everything. Uh, but yeah, it looks like it looks a lot of fun. Hey, uh, those lousy kids of yours getting too much screen time and developing ADH. I can never remember that. Um, get them this, and they'll be sure to thank you. I'm sure. You know, this image um, was also used back in the Star Wars card trader app back in that first season. It was around as part of the reflection set. And there's a number of paintings you can find like this where uh, there's one of Darth Vader and his islands, as you can see, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, during from their battle at A New Hope. There's another one with Vader and Luke Skywalker from their duel in Empire Strikes Back. Um, I want to say uh, it's like Boba Fett and Han Solo, uh, or maybe Han and Carp. I can't remember, but there's a, there's a whole series of these images that are on this reflection uh, motif uh, that are pretty cool. So it's kind of nice to see that they put this into a, a puzzle as well, yeah. because you're right, Taxes. It is a pretty cool image. Yep. So. All right. Well, moving along uh, to my next item. Uh, if you know anything about my collection, you know I'm big on uh, Star Wars Lego sets, and I'm particularly fond of the Ultimate uh, Collectors uh, series. I have uh, other, um, some of the models in my collection are the Snowspeeder, BB-8, R2-D2, uh, the X-Wing, and Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. Uh, this past year, the most recent model that they added to the collection was the Y-Wing. And this is, uh, so this is my next item on the list. It's a, it's just short of 2,000 pieces. It comes in at uh, 1,967, which is what it says on the box, which wow. if you conclude the extra pieces that they give you, it's probably closer to something like 1930 that you need to assemble it. Um, it comes with a gold leader minifigure and his astromech, R2 H, or BHD. Uh, it feels, features highly authentic detailing, including an opening uh, minifigure cockpit, wheel activated rotating ion cannons on the top. So like for instance, in the uh, snow speeder model, the uh, rear facing gunner with the harpoon cannon, if you he, if you rotate his controller, the harpoon moves outside. Um, cool. So they got a similar thing with the uh, ion cannons on this in the cockpit. If you move the controller, then the cannon will move on top. Uh, so 
the um, it, you can it comes with a display uh, model that you can tilt the thing on so that you can see the top of it as it faces you, and these are pretty cool sets. One of the things I like about them is is that as you're building them, you get a little bit more intimately familiar with the craft. Uh, and like you know, for instance, when I was building the X-wing and when I built the Snowspeeder, I learned a little bit more about the styling, the details that I had missed from just seeing these ships in the movies or even in comics or something like that. You kind of get a better idea of some of the uh, the dimensions that you might not otherwise have realized. Um, this is a kind of a pricey set. It's about $200 right now. You can mm. still find it in stock uh, online at lego.com and several other retailers. And I've seen it in plenty of places out and about when I've been shopping. So it's not too hard to come by just yet. Legos are always great. I mean, they're, they're always... Is a great gift and lego sets anymore yeah they're all just a little bit on the pricey side but uh, it's definitely something that you know once you get it put together like you said dennis you appreciate so much more about the detail that goes into the craftsmanship of just you know the items that you're putting together mm -hmm. and it's kind of becoming i mean just like with the puzzle taxes that you were just talking about yeah. and, and and legos in particular it's almost getting to be i hate to say it but a lost art with our youth these days and um did i real quick did i share the story with you guys about the kindergarten teacher that i spoke with recently um, i don't think so okay well just scoping. just a really really quick aside here that has nothing to do with shopping yeah. but um she basically she has 17 kids in her class and we have a lot of amish that live around here as well and um she was saying that you know the Amish kids, they have a pretty good grasp of, of English, which is always the first question that people ask. But she said, you know what, the the English kids, because that's what they, they call us, is the English, right. that we lack is small motor skills. She said there are so many kindergarteners that can't even hold a crayon correctly or can't use scissors. Huh. And it's sad because the small motor skills that they develop with things like Legos and puzzles, I think are being lost to the electronic babysitters that we have. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So it's, you know, I think it's something we really need to bring back into into our youth. And I'm, I'm sure that's not true right. in every subsector of our society, right. but I'm just a firm believer in those those kinds of skills. I have really good small motor skills. Hey, listen. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I'd point out about this set is that I wouldn't, this is definitely not a novice set, uh, but this is a number of pieces. Oh, I would, yeah. I would recommend it for more experienced builders, and it's going to take you several hours to get this one done. Um, they do have a Y-Wing that is more appropriate for younger builders and newer builders. It's a different scale. It's not quite as detailed. Still fun to build. Uh, one of my boys has it. And so, um, you know, if the $200 price point, which is inflated because of the IP that it's associated with, since Star Wars is not is a little bit daunting to you and i know both the items i've picked have been kind of pricey uh so far <laughs> there are there are more affordable lego sets that are just as fun to put together and play with yeah. out there yeah like the oh, uh, absolutely like the uh, lego coffin hmm. the flying coffin mm -hmm. real okay. miniature version of the uh, one -one. jay what do you have <laughs> next <laughs> oh goodness well you know no that's a with would be complete without a little bit of fashion or jewelry accessories and this one I've actually been coveting for quite a while and you know I always kind of prowl around Etsy to see what the sellers are bringing forth and of course anyone that's listened to That's a Wizard in the past knows that I, I do try to highlight those independent companies and you know people that are offering things kind of a little off the beaten path. Uh, and this one is a stackable charm bracelet that you can get at Etsy huh. from Utini Bikini is the seller. And she's actually been around for quite some time and she has a wide array of different sorts of, of geekery in her uh, fashion motifs. So everything from clothing, unique clothing to jewelry, uh, you name it. But uh, what I love about this one is it mimics a lot of the Alex and Annie style um, bracelets and, and jewelry that are really popular right now and basically what they are is they're like I said they're stackable and you can get them in different types of metals so she has a, a what she calls a rainbow metal hmm. yellow gold silver or rose gold and they all kind of link together but they have these fun little charms on them 
that are kind of mystical, magical, but they also have the Star Wars theme. So the rebel symbols in different pastel colors. And then <laughs> my favorite one, she calls the Porgicorn. So it's a Porg that looks like a unicorn huh. with unicorn colors and it's adorable. <laughs> yeah, so, I saw that one and I wasn't I didn't notice the horn at first and I thought it was just kind of a psychedelic porg. Um, yeah. Huh. So it kind of is. It's a porgicorn. So, you know, add that one to your your vocab. <laughs> but they're just a lot of fun and they're they're really cutesy and like I said they're all different pastel colors. So they would really go with a, you know, wide range of of different types of clothing, but they're 17.99 a piece and she discounts each one by $2 per bracelet if you order more than one and they really do look cute stacked up so uh, you can head on over to etsy to utini bikini and and check out her shop so she's got a lot of different things and i absolutely love this one now so can you buy so many somebody gets them. can you buy so many that she ends up having to refund you money oh <laughs> somehow i doubt that oh, okay. i don't think it works that way right. but i don't i didn't say i didn't think it was two dollars yeah, additional two dollars off for everyone right. it was just two dollars Oh, per oh, price. Oh, I yeah, it was so instead of $18, you only have to pay $16 if you order more gotcha. than one. Oh, I get yep. it. Teeny bikini. That's funny. Um, you teeny. <laughs> so, With teeny. When you say these are stackable, I, I can't tell by the image I'm looking at. Do the bracelets link together or do they just, just one bracelet come around and clasp? I'm, uh, I can't tell by the image I'm looking at. Here. They, they can link together. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you choose, if you so choose to do it that way cool all right okay. well taxes what do you have next well i've got something i'm going to go on the little pricier side this time and there's this book out by uh this uh, publisher named tashin t-a-s-c-h-e-n and it's the star wars archives and uh i think this sounds really interesting uh the description is uh Star Wars exploded into our cinema screens in 1977 and the world has not been the same since in this xxl I'm sure that means extra large and not, like, naughty. Uh, size tome. Yeah, size. Uh, George Lucas guides us through the original trilogy like never before, recounting the inspirations, experiences, and stories that created a modern monolith. Um, sorry, monomyth. Uh, complete with script pages, concept art, storyboards, on-set photography, and more. So this is basically a very big coffee table book that runs about $200, but that's got a lot of interesting little tidbits in it. Um, you know, uh... Some quotes from George Lucas, some behind the scenes shots, you know, kind of where they're at on location, like you were talking about, like in Norway and everything. Um, little anecdotes, uh, things like that, little stories. So, I don't know. I think it's kind of interesting. I probably would not spend 200 bucks on it myself right now. Uh, <laughs> you know, wait a while and then see if I can find it in the aftermarket. But, but yeah, so by Tashin, the uh, Star Wars archives. This is really cool. It kind of reminds me of The Vault. Do either of you own that one? The Star Wars no, Vault? I missed that on that. Uh, yeah, I have that one. And this it reminds me a lot of that with all the little anecdotes. And like you said, the, the screen captures and the scripts and that type of thing. But The Vault also has actual little tidbits in it uh, itself. So that one's not really a coffee table one. This is definitely a lot more um, conducive to leaving out to look through. But... Yeah, this is really cool. Yeah, yeah 604 pages. It's, it's, it is enormous. Yeah. Uh, just yeah. kind of glancing at what they've got into it. And the sample pages they have online are just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with some of the stuff spreading across two pages, um, you know, great full page uh, shots, you know, of Luke and the uh, turret on the Millennium Falcon. And yeah, that's cool. The uh, concept art Luke behind Luke. it. Yeah, you know, uh, Macquarie stuff, uh, Chewbacca, Luke, Khan, and Leia in the cockpit of the Falcon. Uh, just some, yeah, like you said, just the, some of this concept stuff. And some of the old posters uh, are in here as well. Yeah, that's uh, cool. Kind of some test images. They they did a fantastic job with this thing. It's like, yeah, you know, it would be something really fun to have out on the uh, coffee table. And I guess there's a note here that if you're in Europe oh. or... English is not your native language. That German, French, and Spanish editions are coming next year as well. So oh, your Amish oh, friends can be so happy. Don't they speak <laughs> Spanish? Uh, no, German would be closer. Oh, Pennsylvania Dutch, but yeah, yeah it's all Greek. <laughs> all right. Well, for my next item, I'm going to go a little bit less expensive than my previous two. Um, 
we all know that Star Wars, first and foremost, was a movie. And we now have 10 of those. And what do we like to do when we watch movies? We like to munch on popcorn. So with that in mind, you can now get the Star Wars Death Star Popcorn Maker. Um, they describe it as, that's no moon. It's a popcorn maker from a galaxy far, far away. It's modeled after the Death Star. Uh, and the top of the maker comes off and doubles as a popcorn bowl. Uh, this is a popper that heats with hot air and it creates what they describe as bright and fluffy popcorn. You can season however you'd like. Um, so again, this is about a $30 popcorn maker. Great for any Star Wars fan, right to have if you're going to be watching Star Wars and you're going to have people over. And they also promote that it is something that you can leave out as a collectible. I don't know about that, but I'll let everyone else decide on their own. <laughs> Do you know how much popcorn it makes at once? Like what? how big the batches are by chance? I looked and couldn't find something, but at least in the pictures that they have available, and you can get this through Amazon, it makes a pretty healthy dose. Um, mm -hmm. It looks like it's enough to feed two or three people uh, at least, if not, or you know, I guess just how much popcorn you like to munch on at a time. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Yeah, it looks I like need it's a new popcorn maker. With flavor. Ha ha. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, because the popcorn maker that I have now, the the top where the popcorn actually comes out, that plastic part is starting to melt. Mm -hmm. And huh. yeah, I know it's it's the weirdest thing. So I might I might have to I might have to pick this one up. I'll have a whole kitchen full of Star Wars gadgets, which you, is You know what you awesome. should do? Throw a couple <laughs> ice cubes in it when you're popping corn. Mm. Then I would have soggy popcorn. That's no fun. Well, do you want that or soggy plastic? <laughs> Good point. You know, all that PVC that's in there. Not PVC. What is that? The, the bad stuff that's in plastic. Anyways. P -P. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So on to, um, on to my next one here. Um, I found a fun little fashion item through Shop Disney. And I always love Chewbacca items. I don't know what it is. I'm very attracted to those kinds of things. I have a Chewbacca sweatshirt from her universe that I actually wear to school. I double it up with a scarf and that type of thing. But uh, but this one is really fun. It's They, they call it a, um, a retro ruffle shirt. And again, it's on yeah. Shop Disney, but it has, um, it almost looks like the wing style arms to it. And it says that it has a plunging neckline and back that evokes both Italian-esque romanticism from the 1950s huh. and hippie chic of the 1960s. And add Chewbacca and you've got a wearable pop culture conversation piece. So it has this gathered rougher, rougher. Uh, ruffled, ruffled overlay. Um, it is sleeveless and it has a soft sheer stretch fabric and it's 95% rayon and 5% huh. percent bandex. Goodness, I can't even talk tonight. And um, so it's very soft, but it's also very stretchy and it's kind of like a bluish color, almost um, like a gunmetal blue, I guess I would call it. And um, it just looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. And I would actually wear this one with a cardigan over top for the winter time as well. And uh, so, yeah, so it's actually on sale right now over at Shop Disney. I know they're having a big sale, so you can check that one out. So you sure that's hippie chic and not hippie chick? Hippie chick? Yeah, maybe it maybe. was worn by hippie chick. Uh-huh. Maybe. Uh. I don't know. <laughs> but I think it's it, it could be changeable with jeans or shorts in the summertime or put a pair of leggings and a cardigan with it, like I said, and, and it could really evoke well, a lot of different looks yeah you know the other thing is is that um if it weren't for the image of chewbacca on it this is actually something i would kind of expect someone in a star wars movie to be wearing yeah. um yeah. given the style it definitely yeah. is um reminiscent of that some of the blousier type things that you would see maybe someone on naboo wearing mm -hmm. or or someone going to the opera on Coruscant uh, wearing as well. I don't know. That's what Good it evoked point. when I took at it. Nice catch. I could see Holdo wearing something like this. Definitely. You know? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it's just a really fun piece. All right. Well, well Texas, what do you have for us? Um, okay. Let's go back over to uh, Think Geek again. So, they have a series of these shirts. Um, and it's funny because if you didn't pay attention... You wouldn't notice any difference um, in these, but they have like a Han one. They've got a Lando 
uh, Boba Fett, um, Chewbacca. And instead of, like, the Polo logo or, you know, where you would expect to see, like, a... I don't know, what's what's the one with the alligator? Izod? Uh, yeah, mm. yeah, something, you know. People usually say I is the odd one. Uh, but anyway, this one, uh, I mean, it's like Han Solo with Blaster out, you know, as a little logo, and then Lando being all suave and everything. They're nice shirts. They're kind of like one primary color, of course, outside, and then whatever the um, little emblem color is, it's also um, kind of duplicated on the inside of the collar and stuff. So anyway, they look pretty sharp. Good for business wear. Casual. Business cash. Biz cash, as we like to say. Mm-hmm. And uh, they run That's, about 20 these are to... Really uh, nice. Twenty ninety nine to twenty nine ninety nine, so they don't break the bank. Yeah, these are really, really cool. I was looking at a couple of the other ones that you had here too. The Chewbacca one, uh, he's got the goggles on, and yeah. it says "perfect for Wook" <laughs> instead of "perfect for work," which yeah. <laughs> is really cool. So yeah, I, I I always appreciate these kind of subtleties. Like you said, it's not you know in your face kind of. Hey, I'm wearing Star Wars, but. Um, you could blend right in, and mm-hmm. yeah, it's really cool. I like them. The Lando ones are, like you said, very suave. Yeah, yellow uh, with more of a dark blue, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, they look great. All right. Well, I like those too, and I like you said, Texas. I kind of like the fact that it is a subtle Star Wars. Uh, uh, imagery there mm-hmm. as opposed to as Joe was saying like right in your face so very cool okay. um, <laughs> oh, no. uh, that's all right uh, so for my next item I don't know what quite to think about I actually own this item but it is the Darth Vader corkscrew so if you have a Star Wars fan that is also a wine drinker in your life you can give them the Darth Vader corkscrew. It is a seven inch tall Darth Vader. And you basically set this figure on top of your bottle of wine. And as you twist Vader, it puts the screw down into the cork and then you can turn it back and pull it straight out. It works fairly well. Mine is more of a kitchen decoration than it is an actual corkscrew. Uh, The novelty of it kind of wears off quickly because while it works, there's more efficient ways of getting wine. But again, it's something fun to get that's... (laughs) Like from a box? uh, No, definitely not. Uh, (laughs) You you can actually get one of these for less than a good bottle of wine. It comes in at about $10. It's available on Amazon. Um, And the corkscrew is stainless steel, so that'll last you. The uh, Vader itself is been fairly durable as well. Um, and, you know, it's just something kind of fun to have in the kitchen uh, as well. So, um, like I said, I I tend to use a traditional corkscrew when I'm opening a bottle of wine. But this is just something fun, especially if you have friends over that are Star Wars fans. To, you know, even if you just open a bottle of wine with uh, mm-hmm. something that people get a kick out of. Mm-hmm. This is really cool. Wine from a box, as Obi Wan would say. So uncivilized. Come on, Taxus, really? Yeah, you prefer a screw top? <laughs> I mean, uh, you know. uh. now this is really cool. I mean, both hands up for wine drinker over here. But um, yeah, I, I could see myself using this. I have one of those nifty little gadgets that you just push a button and it's it's rechargeable. So it. It like gets the the uh, the cork out for you, so mm-hmm. yeah. And then it has a um, thing that seals it too, so it's a different thing where you can actually seal back on, so you don't lose any of the flavor. Yeah. Which is yeah. Really, How like, often does that happen? Yeah. True. Yeah. True. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't use that one very often, quite honestly. But, uh, side yeah, note: this, They this do have really a new awesome. product that just kind of is. It's like a needle, and it goes in through the cork. So you can pour through it without having to pull the cork out, and you just remove it, and it reseals up automatically. Oh, it's pretty neat. Yeah, that is like almost like a spile in a way. Yes, that you might put into it like takes the, a tree. More muscles to frown than spile. Yeah, something like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> but this is cool. I mean, I know on Amazon too, Dennis. They have the um, the Death Star wine stopper that mm-hmm. they show free, as frequently bought together. So that would be neat because, like you said, this is this is only like ten bucks. So you could really get a neat little, you know, beverage drinkers kind of gift set together between that and the stopper. And they even have a Millennium Falcon bottle opener too. As they do. They do. I still use my. Um bottle stopper from the Lando collection. Um, oh, nice. No one has any idea what it is when I use it. They just think it's a fancy looking uh, 
bottle stopper. And uh, but hey, I know, and that's all. Some that's all that matters. So, mm-hmm. absolutely, <laughs> I love it. Well, for my last uh, item here, kind of, I don't know if I'd say I would save the best for last, but um, I found a new company, and I'm always, of course, looking for new and different places to. Uh, reference to and let the scoundrels know about and this one is from geek.jewelry and they actually have a lot of really unique uh, higher end type jewelry everything from engagement rings to earrings bracelets necklaces they even have clad all rings that are uh, fashioned with r2d2 which is really cool uh, but the one piece that caught my eye is the Slave One Caution Carbonite Inside Necklace. Huh. And yeah, this one cool. is just super cool because it's, yeah, it's multi-toned. So it's sterling silver with rose and yellow gold plating. So it has 10 karat rose and green gold and a silver chain set with created stones. And you can actually get this one crafted to your liking. So you can style it pretty much any way you want to with the colors and the stones and that type of thing. But uh, the stones themselves are approximately 0.2 carats total weight, which is quite a lot actually. Uh, But they're all synthetic and they have black and white CZ natural black and white diamonds. So the cubic zirconia and the pendant itself is approximately 21 millimeters tall and you can get it on a 16, 18 or 20 inch chain. So you've got, you know, the slave one image and then on the other side you have the the mythosaur skull. So you've got, you know, the that iconic skull on the back too. So I just thought this one was really cool and it runs for $149 plus shipping and handling. So it's not really super expensive. I mean, it's it's definitely a nice piece a higher quality piece that you know isn't going to you know turn all weird shades of colors and hopefully (laughs) not irritate your skin right but um but yeah so again that's geek.jewelry so check them out they've got a lot of really cool stuff ah cubic zirconia (laughs) you know i once went to a uh fundraiser for the fort worth opera and the theme for the night was um oh how did they put it but it was star wars and star trek this would have been something awesome uh, for people to have at that type of an event because uh, it was black tie. Uh, but, uh, you know, my, my wife ended up wearing um, Federation earrings, but uh, there was a lot of people there that had like some sort of Star Wars tie pins or air cufflinks and whatever. But this this just made me think of that type of an event. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would love to have this one. Love to get my hands on it because I could wear this to school, you know, anything really. Yeah. It's really cool. I kind of like how it looks like the slave one. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what's neat about it. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, um, okay. I guess it's down to me. Um, well, just looking over my remaining choices, um, you know, kind of had the uh, Darth Vader briefcase up on my list, but uh, it looks a little too over the top, even though it's really cool. Um, had the uh, R2-D2 Blue Women's Blazer also kind of up there, which... It's a real sharp blazer. Now, typically, I don't wear women's blazers. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, but uh, <laughs> this one I decided made you look a little too much like you're part of um, um, Scientology. So uh, I went with something that's kind of a little. It looks kind of like their uniforms. I'm saying. Um, I like the inner lining though. Yeah, it's got the the R2D2 bubbles all over the inside, yeah, which is cool. cool. So um, I went with something that's always a pleaser. For ten forty nine, it's a uh, Millennium Falcon coffee mug, and it's uh, basically one of those heat reactive ones, to where uh, it starts out with just the Falcon, and um, it's the old Falcon, right? But then whenever you put heat, it kind of changes into the new old Falcon, I guess the pre Han one, and right. uh, then it like uh, says the all new Millennium Falcon underneath it, and like has like engine contrails looking like you know it's hitting hyperspace or something. Um, it looks really cool. It's really neat. It's black star field around the Falcon. Uh, the Falcon's pointed upwards, uh, where you place gently place your soft, soft lips, ready to sup upon the warm goodness that is your morning coffee. Ooh. And it's got a uh, you yeah, know little uh, I don't know what would you call that stainless steel ring at the bottom. Probably helps. Uh, old heat or something but 
But anyway, so it's a pretty good gift, especially if you're a coffee lover, you know, which uh, I am, and you basically don't like to wash your mugs until, like, you're absolutely out of mugs, like I do. So. <laughs> but you can't put this in the microwave because of the metal, so... I think that's very important to point out. Oh, that is true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, mm -hmm. it's really cool. So, I mean, if you, I don't know, um, we use a Keurig style thing. Well, it's a Keurig, but, uh, but also we have, uh, one of those, uh, Breville water heaters, you know? Oh um, yeah. And it, like super heats water, like real fast. And so, uh, yeah, we don't really use the microwave much to heat water anymore. Perfect. Yeah. We call that an instant hot where we live yeah i have one of those too like right from the hot like right from the tap yeah that's really cool yeah yeah it's also my nickname in high school yeah <laughs> instant that's hot that's right <laughs> yeah this would be a nice companion mug to those um coffee mugs that have been around for a while that have the lightsaber hilts and then when you fill it up with a hot beverage the blades of the oh, lightsabers yeah. come out yeah, so that's cool uh but this is pretty cool i mean the main addition to the falcon itself when you put the hot water in is that uh, skate pod that Lando had yeah. mounted on the front. Uh, right. But then you do get the, the lettering of the all new Millennium Falcon, which is not precisely accurate, but still, we know what they mean. <laughs> yeah. all I right. can see you sitting around in your in your Sithly robe drinking out of your Falcon mug. That's right. Absolutely. Hello. Yeah. Oh, I didn't expect you so early. Come in. <laughs> Would you like a cup of Java? There you go. Yeah. Flown in from the finest fields on <laughs> Kessel. Right. All right. Well, for my last one and the last one on the show here, um, I went with something that's kind of special to me, I guess. I mean, yeah, I, I'm known from comic reviews and whatever. So I picked out a couple of the trade paperbacks that collect some of the Star Wars comics from this year. And specifically, um, I went with Darth Vader Volume 3, which is the... Um, Burning Seas story arc, and this is how Vader and the Empire subjugated Moncala. Really good story uh, with some nice twists that uh, happen along the way, and a few revelations about the Inquisitors and um, some of the Jedi, and exactly what happened to the uh, King of Moncala. So that's a good story. I highly mm -hmm. recommend that one. And then Poe Dameron Volume Five. This was the last story arc in the Poe Dameron series before it ended just a couple months ago. It also has our first content that comes after The Last Jedi. Now, don't get too excited because there's not a whole lot that happens after The Last Jedi, but we do find out what happened to Black Squadron or what they were up to while Poe and the rest of the Resistance was engaged with the First Order during uh, uh, The Last Jedi. So there's some pretty cool stories there. I'm thinking maybe we're getting a few hints about what we might be able to expect from episode nine uh as far as elements of the resistance are going to go but it's a good story and um it's written by charles soul who was also writing darth vader and for my money one of the best writers that star wars comics have had for yeah. the past couple of years um and i highly highly recommend it and oh, all those can be found on amazon.com yeah that's a good gift mm -hmm. especially for somebody who might need to catch up to the stories yeah mm -hmm. absolutely so if we had to give it uh, the wizard award what would be your favorite out of, out of each of your picks? Hmm. Well, I know game time decision here, right? <laughs> yeah, you know the thing is, is that the the most covetous item I have here on this list is that Columbia jacket. Um, like I said, it is it's completely impractical for where I live. Um, you know, and if I lived in a cold weather climate, that'd be kind of cool. But it's also fairly difficult to get right now. Um, but that being said. If you go to startwars.com, you can find a really great article about how they resurrected this old collector's item and all the work that went into recreating it. Uh, and it's it's kind of cool to read about. So I think, at least from my choices, that's the one I'd give the award to. Mm -hmm. um, how about you, Texas? I'm going to go with Sexy Robe. Yeah. Uh, it's all silky and like satiny looking. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I noticed I should have picked as a complimentary item to it. There's um, some gold chain necklaces with some, um, you know, medallion type stuff at the end of it, like our big R2-D2 and stuff. I'd probably throw that in the mix, too. You know what I mean? Just kind of, yeah. you know, got out of the, uh, got out of the uh, sauna. Yeah. I don't know. Very having, good. Having a cup of coffee. <laughs> Wearing my, my gold chain R2-D2. 
Oh, well, there you go. Room. That's right. Perfect. So that, Perfect. I think that's going to win it for me. It's, uh, that's just, it's kind of evokes some terrible, terrible imagery and makes me giggle. So. <laughs> Uh, well, for me, I have to throw it out to Geek Jewelry, just in general. And, and you know, I like I said, the one that caught my eye right off the bat was the the Slave One necklace. But I really, really, really recommend that you all check out the site Scoundrels because there really is a lot of cool stuff on here. They have um, bar necklaces that have Orabesh in both the Alliance and the Empire. They have. Uh, wedding bands for guys they have beautiful necklaces like bb8 that has this uh, sterling silver with a citrine gem they have a bb8 kinetic pendant there's earrings um there's just so much gorgeous stuff and the one centerpiece piece of jewelry that they have is the custom silver necklace princess leia ceremonial necklace that was worn by her in star wars and that one runs for a cool eight hundred and ninety five dollars so if you're really really looking for something you know high end you're you're definitely going to get that from from that but they have matching men and women's bands for uh you know weddings and that type of thing and so it's just it's just a really 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 cool cool site did you had a band at your wedding yeah is that what you're saying yeah well it was more like a guy (laughs) with a kazoo Oh, all right. Well, cheap. I'm sure that was fun. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that's going to do it then for this edition of That's So Wizard. Before we go, what do you guys have going on that our scandals can look forward to this week? Well, right here, my home is Starship Sabers and Scoundrels. I'm just nestled all up in my bed with all of these wonderful images of these gifts dancing in my head. So um, you can always catch all of my blogs over on Coffee with Kenobi as well, as well as my Core Worlds Couture fashion reviews. So if you're in need of some more ideas, none of that fashion ever goes out of style. So there's always links there for um, some of those great items that you can purchase. Um, And let's see, we just wrapped up the mid-season finale of Geek Supreme um, had some fun different little discussions kind of with a uh, Christmas theme of course with that the one before that with uh, Mark and I'm so sorry Belomo I think I got his name right uh, that one that one's really really fascinating and I recommend anybody go back and listen to that because I also referenced that in an article uh, it, part of the RetroZap uh, 12 days of x Wingmas. am I getting that right Dennis <laughs> X-Wing Xmas, X-Wing, yes. Something like that? Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, so, yeah, I'm uh, I'm not sure what day I am, but uh, I write a little bit about what uh, these insignificant little hunks of plastic truly represent to us in our lives as we look back at them. So, yeah, check that right. out. It's only at RetroZap.com. It's one of the rare times you'll find me writing something because I suck at it. As for myself, you can find my comic reviews on RetroZap.com and each month, I'm talking Star Wars comics with Jovial J. Shepard on Jedi Journals. Like Jay, I am a blogger over at Coffee with Kenobi. I am currently working on a series looking at the partnerships and relationships of Solo, a Star Wars story, and how they evolve over the course of the movie with all but one really pretty much dying <laughs> by the end of the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can look for that um, series over the next couple months. Uh, if you want to find us on social media, we are at SQPod on Twitter and Instagram and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash SQPod. You can email us at SQPod at RetroZap.com. You can follow Darth Texas on Twitter at Darth Texas. Jay is at Joyce Krebs and I am at DJKVER2. Speaking of RetroZap, we are a proud part of the RetroZap.com podcast network. The network currently features more than a dozen shows covering everything from retro gaming and movies to the Animaniacs, collecting, Dune, Game of Thrones, and of course, a whole lot of Star Wars. You can subscribe to the network feed and you'll get all the shows in one place. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of That's a Wizard. We'll talk to you soon with another regular edition of the show and perhaps another Scoundrel Special Edition. Until then, may the Force be with you and happy holidays, Scoundrels. Beautiful. God. Where do you think you're going? Nobody's leaving. Nobody's walking out on this fun old-fashioned family Christmas. No, no, we're all in this together. This is a full-blown four-alarm holiday emergency here. We're going to press on, and we're going to have the hap-hap-happiest Christmas...